Welcome back, everyone. It is Sunday sit-down time. We got Columbia Tribune's Chris Kwasinski in the house for Sunday sit-down tonight. Chris, today has just been, I think you put it best, scrambled eggs mine today with how much we took in from Mizzou football. How are you doing? <laughs> I literally scrambled a little bit. We did take in a lot. I mm -hmm. know you said you talked to 31 different people, and <laughs> I think I've got about the same. It's just so many people, so little time, but it's fall camp. It's starting mm -hmm. up. Well, it's, it's the perfect time of year. We love when this starts. You know, let's start with who we talk with first. That's Eli Drinkwitz. You know, what was your biggest takeaway from him? I feel like competition was the one word we heard a lot. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the biggest thing about the word competition was mm -hmm. just how much time he spent on each little thing. And, and he didn't really talk about the defense much. He talked about defensive line, defensive end. And that made sense because there's a few things moving around, a few things shifting. We knew that. We talked about that in media days. But when it came to the offense, it was really surprising to me that it was like, yeah, this stuff is wide open. And we might move Cameron Johnson, even though we recruited him as a center, we might move him outside. We might move Connor Tolleson outside. We might move different guys different places. And same goes for the wide receivers. But then again, when you have so many talented guys at receiver, what are you going to do? And we talked to Luther today, and he talked about being a Heisman candidate. And uh, you've got so much talent to figure out. It just comes down to what can you do to put them in the right positions, and that's what fall camp's about. And um, I think tight end is something I'm watching a lot because Tyler Stevens comes back, guys like Max Wishner, Ryan Horace Camp, but also Jordan Harris, Brad Norfleet, two guys that we uh, that were part of that recruiting class that are kind of coming up, are really athletic two-sport guys. So. Mm -hmm. Those competitions there were the things that really kind of stood out to me because he spent a lot of time talking about it. He kind of mentioned, hey, these are the things we need to figure out. Didn't talk about Chris Avon Strain, didn't talk about Ennis Rakestraw mm -hmm. because why would you? Those guys are set in there mm -hmm. uh, and we're expecting big seasons out of those guys. But offensively, we'll see some pieces figured out. Yeah, I think the big focus obviously is that wide receiver room. How do you keep so many guys happy when he, like he said, you know, every wide receiver wants the ball in their hand. So that's going to be an interesting competition to watch as well. Oh, absolutely. And not just like the, the Luther Burdens of the world, because right. we know he's going to get his slot catches. We know he's going to get his. But when you got, you know, Theo Weiss, Dennis Jackson, I mean, mm -hmm. uh, behind him, uh, the Manning brothers there, uh, those are really fast guys and guys that are really talented. But when you think a lot about what they can bring to this unit, you got to sort it out. you got to get them in places. And uh, we talked about it off uh, uh, right before we started, which is Mikai Miller, another dude that made big plays for Mizzou last year. There's so many guys that have the ability. It's just how do you sort them out and kind of say, hey, it might not be your time now, but it will be soon because we got these guys in front of you. So um, I think it comes down to Jacob Peeler and knowing his track record as a receivers coach, not just in the SEC, but elsewhere. Uh, especially Texas State is offensive coordinator. He, he's got the know-how, and uh, I, I think it's a good problem to have, right? right? It's, a, it's a good problem to have when you have so many talented guys. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, obviously, the, the competition everyone's watching is the quarterback competition, right? You know, the first time we actually got to talk to Sam Horn today, we got to talk to Jake Garcia. You know, what's your impression from those guys? It seems like they're they're going out there, and the, I asked their goal. It's to get the starting job, right? Everyone wants it. Oh, yeah, everybody wants it, but only one person's going to get mm -hmm. it. And uh, like Drake was always told us before, hey, it's going to start with Brady. He's the incumbent guy. He's the guy that's going to get the first crack at it. But, you know, talking to Sam, it, it seemed like he had this confidence about him that uh, maybe wasn't there last year. And I asked him about, hey, what do you, what were some of the challenges you had of just being a college kid? And he's like, first time away from home, he moved all the way from Georgia, all the way out here. He had to learn how to play baseball also. He had an injury that he had to go through. And there's a lot that he considered. And, and it's just his freshman year. And, it really seems like he's more centered, he's more confident. He didn't get that many snaps football-wise last year. We saw him play New Mexico State. And, but other than that, you know, it just didn't really happen for him. But now he has the opportunity to go and get it. And there's that confidence about understanding what he has to do and what he has to do to go get it. Uh, and Jake Garcia, too, is a guy that just seemed confident. He, mm -hmm. just, he just stood there, he didn't answer questions, and uh, it didn't really waver in his responses. And he's like, he told me the first thing he had to do was buy a coat because he came from Miami <laughs> to Missouri. And it's going to be a change. A little bit of a change. <laughs> it's totally fine. I was like, yeah, I get it. I would know, do the same thing, too. Uh, but he, he seemed like a guy that understands what he has to do in order to earn that job. And uh, in that, you know, that three-way competition is also Dylan Leibel, a guy that Drewitz has talked a lot mm -hmm. about. It, does he have the same odds to win the job? And maybe it remains to be seen, but you never know. You know, this is just part of the battle that we're going to see uh, play itself out. And um, when you have three confident guys, and Jake, Sam, and Brady, like that's just makes everyone else better. I know mm -hmm. that's some, that's a common denominator that we all talked about, but 
Um, I, it all just comes down to who wants it the most and who's got the know-how and the ability. Well, I know we both talked to you know Cody Schrader and Nate Pete. Uh, you know, Cody obviously got the majority of those uh, the run game last year, but Nate Pete really came off very confident this year. You know, tell us a little bit about your conversation with Nate Pete. I know you had a good one. Yeah, it was really. It was really inspiring, honestly, mm -hmm. because obviously you don't want to rehash some of the struggles he had last year. Uh, and this is a Columbia guy who came to Mizzou mm -hmm. to show on for his city, kind of put it out there for uh, as a Rockbridge alumni. And I was with Martez Manuel, one of his good friends, but it, it just didn't play out as we all thought it would. Mm -hmm. We saw the flashes, you know, against Florida, had a 100-yard game. Uh, he had some opportunities to play, and you saw the shiftiness, the speediness, the, the lightning quick ability that he had that made him a good returner at Stanford. And uh, But then when you involve, or I guess kind of fold in some of the struggles he had with ball security, it, it just didn't play out the way we thought, but he didn't back away from that. He really took accountability for those, uh, those mistakes, some of those mishaps, and he's ready to move on. And he doesn't want to forget, because he, he wants to understand there's a reason why I have to be better this year. Mm -hmm. But he said, you know, I want to be the best Nate Pete I can possibly be. And that, that to me, was impressive, because he had every reason to, you know, to think differently after some of the struggles, because it's not easy, especially the fumble against Auburn. We don't, we really didn't talk that much about it, but I could see it in his eyes. He like, does, I know what you mean but I'm not going to mention it. And that was his way of moving on. And he's ready for a big year. And I think we're going to see good stuff out of not only Cody, but Nate Pete as well. Well, we're going to get to see them bright and early tomorrow morning out at the Mizzou uh, Athletic Facility. You looking forward to getting to some practices there, Chris? <laughs> I'm looking forward to hopefully staying cool and putting on a lot of sunscreen. But yeah, it'll be really interesting because you, you kind of get the notepad out and you kind of right. say, well, here's the first team. Well, who's getting the first crack? Mm -hmm. And that's how you start to think, okay, this is the person we're going to think about. Uh, the end of the week and then if they're not there maybe who's coming in and mm -hmm. who's got to unseat that position and it's a lot of fun it's all you know maybe not for someone like myself with bad eyesight but <laughs> you know it's it's what binoculars are for well looking forward to seeing you out there thanks for coming on after the hectic day that we had out of the mizzou football facility hey, it's all fun and games right awesome well for the rest of you guys we'll be right back after the break